Hello and welcome to the first in a series of videos on data validation using PHP. Uh, I'm going to operate under the assumption that you're already familiar with passing form data, so I mean the get and the post method. I'm going to use the get because it's easier to demonstrate. So I've got this form here and uh, it's got a first name which I've already created. Its name is F name. That is important. That's how it's going to get passed. I've got L name. I've got a submit button. Two text boxes. So what I'd like to do here is I need to get the information. Right, so I'm going to do opening closing PHP tags. And if I want to get information from a form using the get method, I'm going to create a variable called F name. And I'm going to set that equal to dollar sign underscore get square brackets semicolon inside of the brackets some kind of quotation marks and then the name of the field so f name that is going to get that right this and this have the same name oftentimes they do not necessary this and this do need to match all right so that's essentially how you get something from a form I'm going to duplicate that, Control D and Notepad++. If you're not using Notepad++, hopefully you have something like that. If you don't, it's not a big fix. Right, so I'm getting the first name, I'm getting the last name. At this point, it's worth saving. And I will run this thing in Firefox, and I think I have one here too. Um, PHP is not being processed because I'm going to run this through the local host. If you have a live website, you don't worry about this. And I get two notices, right? This is a classic. It's, as soon as you start writing functional PHP code, you're going to start dealing with some notices. And it says undefined index name f name. In other words, since we're using the get method, you could interpret that as saying there's nothing up here called f name or l name. Nothing was passed via the form. I fix that like this really quickly. Right as soon as there is information to pass, those notices go away. So was that a real problem? Uh, it wasn't a huge problem, right? Hence, notice, right? A notice is not a huge deal. Your program doesn't crash, but it's something you could fix. Now, this is a problem, but in practice, sometimes people will suppress those notices with the suppression operator, which is the uh, at sign. It's really not something you want to do. It's hacky. Uh, it's a bad idea. You could do that. So, for example, I just suppressed F name. So if I go back to my page and I reload it, Right, I got rid of one of my notices, but you didn't really address it at all. Notices are to help you out, right? I know they're annoying, but that's really not data validation. So let's talk about how we can fix this. So whenever you've got a page which is getting or posting some information, um, you run the risk of getting those notices or warnings or whatever uh, every time it's not there. So what you really need to do is you need an if statement. And this is where data validation comes in. So if, and I'm going to use the standard is set function. So notice I've got a function inside of an if. Can you do that? Of course. And I want to see if dollar sign underscore get square brackets parentheses f name exists. Right. So this is saying does it exist? If it's if it exists, then I want that to happen. Notice I'm just restructuring this. So I'm taking the same logic that I had. I'm just wrapping it in an if statement to make sure that I don't try and get something which doesn't exist. And this makes sense. Check for existence, then assign the variable. I'll write that again. This is a little painful the way I write it. Maybe a lot painful. So I'll do another is set. Uh, yes, I do know that this is a little weird what I'm doing. We'll talk about that in a minute. And this is L name. All right, so I'm checking for the existence of L name before I, before I set the variable. Right, and I paste that in there, and I just changed the structure of things. Two independent if statements, should they be independent? Well, the way I wrote this, I, I, they would, right? It's not, an, it's not an LCF situation. Let me save that, head on over here, refresh, and my uh, notices are gone because rather than ever reference that information, I check to make sure it exists. But here's where things get a little more interesting. Presumably, I'm going to write an echo down here. And that echo is going to be like, hello, um, whatever you entered for your first name. So something like that. So that's concatenation. So if I enter Ken, it's going to say, hello, Ken, which is good. I save this, load up my page, reload it. 
and I've got a notice again. So undefined variable f name. Oh, I think I did something funny. No, I didn't. Uh, I still have a mistake. Anyways, it's saying on line 11, I have a problem now, right? So I addressed these problems, but now I've got another one. It's saying that f name doesn't exist. And it in fact does not exist because there is no data yet. So in other words, this evaluated to false and this statement never happened. So this variable has never even been declared when we're reaching this point. And so I've just got a different warning, right? So I'm trading one set of warnings for another, which isn't great. Um, this all goes away at the point where I actually put some reasonable information in here. Right now, it passes the is set, and now uh, I'm able to use that variable. There's a lot of ways to address this. I am kind of a big fan of using flags or a Boolean variable and setting that to true uh, when you pass these checks. So I'll show you another approach to this. It's kind of a little bit like that. I'm just going to structure this differently because you see that this kind of leads to a problem right here. So the other way, the more common way of structuring this is it's still going to be an F. But let's check uh, both of the variables at the same time. So dollar sign underscore yet. We'll go f name. And this set of parentheses ends here. So I'm going to do and. So, right, so let's check both of them. So I'll say another is set. Right, This is just kind of ugly to write, I think. Well, I know it is. But you'll get used to it. And I'll look for l name. So what this says is if both of them exist, just changing the structure here, then I'll do this assignment and copy that. This is the same thing here. And uh, this, well, here's the idea. I will only print this message out in the event that both of the pieces of data exist. This is probably a better way to structure it. I'm going to cut this paste it in here. And this is only, so another way to think about this is, is this was fine right here, so check a variable, check a variable, but there was no real good way to stop the output from being generated. But this way, we check both the variables, and only if both the variables ex exist, then we say the uh, greeting. I'll save this. Let me get rid of this information. All right, so notice there is no information. I don't get any warnings. I put in Ken and I get a greeting. And at this point you see a little bit about is set. So I didn't fill in L name, but something was still passed. Sure, nothing was passed, but really is set. I mean, one way to think about it is, is it kind of just looks up here and it, was there an F name, was there an L name? So at this point I can kind of tell you that is set really just checks to see if the form was submitted. And so there might be more levels of data validation that you wanted to do. And we'll talk about those in the next video. Um, also, just while we're here, you've already watched eight minutes, we might as well do a few more. Uh, let's say that the user did what I just did. See, I put in an F name, and not an L name. Um, there's no way to tell the user using this structure right here, which is more concise and preferable, usually. Uh, I can't tell them what was missing or what was wrong. Whereas if you write independent if statements like this, I could say else, right, I know I don't need quotes, echo missing first name, right? That's good. And I can say exactly what you were missing. Whereas down here, using this approach with the ands in it, it's going to be missing something, right? I mean, look at the logic. There's no way to determine what was missing using this structure. So it's a give and take. Yes, this is usually how it's done but you also can't give any good feedback. And I know you've been through a situation where you're filling out a form and at the top it just says missing data and you're sitting there trying to figure out, well, what did I skip? Right, that's kind of annoying. Whereas this is actually useful to build, generate, uh, tell you exactly what you're missing, which is more helpful, but it also takes more lines of code. So as with everything else, it's just a series of trade-offs. Uh, another thing I'll mention just before I quit this video, is uh, my PHP videos generally don't get too many views. That's why I don't make too many of them. So if you did enjoy this video, you should uh, give it a thumbs up. Give me some feedback because it's kind of frustrating to make videos that people don't watch. So if you like it, let me know. Thanks for watching.